assault on Formosa, Japan's great shipping center. B-29 super fortresses in repeated blows slash deeper into Japan's empire. Plotting the relentless Pacific advance are General Douglas MacArthur and Admiral Chester Nimitz. At Moratai Island, the Navy supports a new landing by MacArthur's 6th United States Army. The United States Navy has now grown to 1,300 fighting ships. Task forces, whole naval divisions press the attack. In this force of weapons, ships, and men is the familiar amphibious pattern that has been followed hundreds of times in two short years to bring the Allies ever closer to Japan. personally inspects newly won Moratai. Ready and equipped for a fight, the American troops were here unopposed by the enemy. Against the Palau Islands on the road to the Philippines, major landing operations. Here on a beachhead in the Palaus, a heavy price is paid to gain essential ground. pictures were the last ever taken by American newsreel war correspondent Damien Parer. Accompanying men of the 1st Marine Division into action, Parer's camera records the advance of a patrol under constant fire. near their objective. Here these pictures end. For here, among many American casualties in the expanding battle against Japan, cameraman Parer was killed. The 2nd Infantry Division, American fighting men of the 5th Army in Italy, helping to bring liberation from tyranny to towns and villages in the path of the northward advance. Here on the heels of the retreating enemy come men of the fighting 92nd, men who know all the tribulations of the foot soldier. They know the weariness, the loneliness for home, the hell of battle but they will carry out their mission. At an evacuation hospital, General Mark Clark adds his personal respects to the official honors already won by the 92nd, by Americans who have paid a price in blood and pain for the common victory. Wendell L. Wilkie, Republican candidate for the presidency of the United States in the election of 1940, taken suddenly at the height of his vigor at 52. Nominated by popular acclaim in a phenomenal overnight rise to political eminence, 
Wendell Wilkie won the admiration of all his countrymen for his energy, honesty, and forthright courage. He spent the last years of his vigorous life in an effort to promote mutual understanding and goodwill among all nations. He talked with Churchill in London and shared experiences with Britain's average folk. He visited and talked with the people of Russia, of the Middle East and of China, renewing his strong faith in unity among all peoples. great American and world citizen who will be sorely missed in the critical years ahead. Ending international security talks at Dumbarton Oaks, Under Secretary Statinius summarizes the result. We have today placed before the American people and all other peace-loving peoples, the proposals which have been worked out at Dumbarton Oaks for creating the means of keeping the peace in the future. We propose the establishment of an international organization to assure that disputes likely to endanger the peace should be settled by peaceful means and that in any event, the world's peace and security should be maintained by force if necessary. Peace cannot be kept by force alone. The peace-loving nations must join together to build the ways and means of advancing the freedom, opportunity, and well-being of mankind in a world free from the fear of war. of the Chinese 20th Group Army lay down a barrage against the ancient walled city of Teng Chung, a principal enemy obstacle to the joining of the Lado and Burma Road. Supported by United States Air Forces and using modern arms and field pieces, this American-trained army has for five weeks fought an inch-by-inch inch fight against Teng Chung's embattled Japanese garrison. Now, the enemy's defense weakening, they storm the wall. Through gaps in the ruined wall come the first wounded. Casualties are heavy. <laughs> Stiff fighting continues as the advance penetrates deeper into the town. All of Teng Chung's 2,000 Japanese defenders were killed or captured in the battle. American bombers come over Ploesti in the first of a series of continuing raids which almost completely wiped out these huge Romanian oil fields. These Axis-made films, recently seized by the United States 15th Air Force, show the tremendous fires started in the attacks. helmeted fighters battle vainly against blazes raging for miles in oil storage areas and railroad marshalling yards. From Ploesti alone came 27% of all Axis petroleum products to feed the Nazi war machine. Now much of it goes up in pillars of flame and smoke. offensive against this vital industrial target cost 300 American planes and 3,000 American casualties, but it vastly reduced the flow of oil to Nazi Germany. 